Hey, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna be talking about some tips on how to use one of my favorite on-camera speed light flashes, the Godox V860 Mark II, and we're gonna get all into that right now. <laughs> how's it going? Kyle here helping you level up your photo, video, and music, and like I said, we are gonna be talking about how to use the V860 Mark II. This is absolutely one of my favorite speed lights. I've actually already done a review on this. If you haven't seen that already, I'm gonna put a link probably up in the corner. I think it's up here. Go ahead and check that review out. And on that note, if you are a media creator or just into photo, video, and music like I am, definitely click the subscribe button somewhere on the screen here so you can keep track of what I'm up to. One thing very important to note about the Godox line of cameras is that they make different models for several different flashes and other accessories to correspond to the name brand camera that you would be using it with, not to mention other accessories. So for example, right here, I have the Sony version. It's going to be compatible with Sony flashes and Sony cameras via the hot shoe and wireless protocols. The same thing can be said for their Canon model, the Nikon model, uh, the Panasonic model, so on and so forth. Now, if you're watching this video thinking, you know, I have the Canon model, Kyle's talking about the Sony model. Well, you don't need to be worried about that. For all intents and purposes, the functionality is exactly the same, but when you go to the special modes, they're going to be only able to talk using the specific protocols designed, and that's gonna be based on the model. Now, we're gonna go into a bit of a close-up so you can see the LCD screen uh, while I go through all the different instructions, but essentially what I'm gonna go over in this video is a kind of tour of all the physical buttons and, and plugs, whatnot, on the flash itself. Then we're gonna go over some basic navigation to the menus, what menus do what, and then we're gonna go into some specific workflows so you can follow along menu for menu, button for button. Specifically, I'm gonna go over using this flash just on your camera alone, then using it on your camera, commanding uh, other flashes as a master, how to use it as an optical slave, how to use it with a flash trigger, and then how to use it while being triggered by other Godox flashes. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here is our Godox V860 Mark II, and you can see that this is the Sony version by the S. Looking on the back of the flash, we can see the LCD screen as well as a series of buttons. We have our trigger button that'll trigger the flash at any time. We have our mode button and lock button. We have four buttons here on top that will correspond to certain controls that will be displayed on the LCD screen. We have our wireless selection button, our on and off switch, our rotary dial, and our set button in the middle. Let's go ahead and flip the power switch to on. You'll notice these two buttons, if pressed together, will reset all of the settings. You can see reset there on the bottom of the screen for a moment. And this is just a quick proof that everything I'm about to do will be done on a default setting flash. On the front, we have our optical sensor. On one side, we have our battery port. And on the other side, we have a series of connections for a sync cord, wireless control port, as well as a USB port. On the top of the flash head, we have our catch light panel and a built-in wide panel. And that covers all the physical features of this flash. Here's a little demo of that uh, flash test button. Every time you push it, it's gonna trigger the flash. Now, a quick demo of that uh, radial dial. You're able to adjust two things, your flash power and your flash zoom. Now, I'm doing this in manual mode right now. You can see that I'm playing with the, the power of the flash. But you're able to adjust the power and the zoom in the other modes as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit that zoom button, and you'll notice that the zoom has now been highlighted, and as I turn that rotary dial, it changes. Now, one of the most important buttons here is the wireless selection button. With it, you can cycle through all the different ways to trigger this flash or control other flashes. For the most part, when the LCD screen is green, it means it is the master, and when it's orange, it means it is a slave. Now, I think one of the most complicated things about 
the Godox menus is the difference between the wireless selection button and the mode button. As far as the wireless selection button, you have control plus, radio, and what I like to call on-camera on flash mode. And you have commander and slave versions of each of those. Now, once you're in the correct wireless mode, you can then hit the mode button, and then you'll cycle through things like manual, TTL, and multi-flash or stroboscopic flash. Understanding the difference between those two buttons is honestly the most complicated part of this flash's menu system. I'll try and be as clear as possible with where we're going uh, as this tutorial continues. Now you can see right now we are in the control plus mode. In the control plus mode, the flash is gonna use the wireless protocols unique to the model. Here we have the Sony, so it's gonna use the Sony wireless protocols. So if I had a bunch of Sony flashes, this would be able to talk to all of them. So if you had the Canon version, the Nikon version, so on and so forth, you would be able to interface with those branded flashes. Right now we're in master mode. In this case, this flash would likely be riding on top of the camera and I would make all of my controls right on this screen. If I hit the wireless selection button again, we're going to be in the control slave function. Again, still using those unique wireless protocols. However, this is going to be a slave rather than a master or a commander. Set this up using the corresponding settings unique to whichever brand you're using. So let's try and walk through our first use case. We wanna take this V860 Mark II and have it be optically triggered by flashes of different brands. Keep in mind, we're not gonna be able to use the high-speed sync, so we're gonna be uh, restricted to one 250th of a second. So let's walk through A to Z on how we can have the Godox be triggered optically by the other two flashes, and then even vice versa, how we can trigger the other two flashes with the Godox. We're gonna use the wireless selection button to turn wireless mode off. Now, in the manual, Godox doesn't seem to have a name for this, but they call it turning wireless mode off. I call it on-camera mode. Basically, make sure you don't have the radio logo or the Control Plus logo in the top left. And we're gonna wanna be in manual. Now, once we're in manual mode, you'll notice that one of our function buttons reads S1 slash S2. Use this to cycle through either S1 or S2 slave modes. Now, if you're not familiar with the difference between S1 and 2, S1 will make the flash fire as soon as it sees a flash from another flash unit, and S2 is for when your camera is using a pre-flash. Quick rule of thumb is if you notice that this flash is only firing every other time, it means you're in S2 mode and you should be in S1 mode. For the most part, I stick in S1 because I don't use any cameras that have a pre-flash setup. So we're in manual, we're in S1, we manually configured our power to one by one, and let's turn on some of these other flashes to see if we can't trigger the Godox V860 Mark II. Now I'm turning over the flash so that the optical sensor is visible. It's very important that this optical sensor can see the other flashes, otherwise it's just not going to work. Now it may be difficult to see because of the frame rate of the video, but as I hit that test fire button and, and flash these other flashes, the Godox is sensing that flash and triggering optically alongside it. Let's try this uh, other flash now. And there you go. Again, it's probably gonna be difficult to see, but uh, trust me, it is firing. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and set these other two flashes to slave S1 mode. Keep in mind, now we have three different brands of flashes and they're all going to be triggering at the same time. I'll go ahead and turn the flashes over so we can see their optical sensors. And as I fire the Godox at them, both of them are firing alongside it. And essentially using these settings, each of these can fire any of the other ones. So it's just a matter of how you are triggering that first one. Uh, for the most part, you're probably gonna have one of these on your camera. And that is how you set your Godox V860 Mark II 
to be optically triggered. Now let's say you have your uh, Godox flash and you just want to have it ride right on top of your camera. Now how can you have your camera send information over to the Godox flash? Now as long as you have the correct model, uh, in this case I have the S because I work with Sony cameras, it should work automatically. So let's take the little hot shoe protector off because this is going to go into the hot shoe. And wouldn't you know it, it fits perfectly. Cinch it down and now you're able to trigger the flash using your shutter release button on your camera. Essentially, the only thing you'll need to do in your camera is let it know that you have a flash on top. Now, if you're in manual mode, you're gonna have to be configuring all the settings on the back of the flash manually. If you want, you can swing this over to TTL mode by clicking the mode button, and now the flash will be looking for information from the camera to configure the settings for each flash. Again, each camera is different, but just make sure that your camera knows to send TTL information to an on-camera flash. And even though we are getting TTL info, we are still able to configure some flash exposure compensation, as well as the zoom of the flash. Do so by clicking the corresponding function buttons and then using the radial dial to select the value. Let's go ahead and take the flash off and then talk about our next practical use case. Now we're still in that on-camera mode. We've talked about manual and uh, TTL thus far, but if we keep hitting that mode button, we'll run into multi, and this stands for our stroboscopic or multi-flash mode. Using this feature, you can program flashes to go off in succession. This can result in some pretty unique photographs. Just program in your power and your hertz and let her rip. Now, I don't use this setting too much, so I don't know everything there is to know about it, but I wanted to make sure folks knew where this was. Now let's go to our next use case. Let's say we want to use this uh, 860 Mark II to control other Godox flashes. We're going to hit our radio selection button until we reach the radio mode and make sure we're in master mode. Now in this case, this flash would be riding on the camera and it would be the master commanding all the other Godox flashes in the room. You'd go ahead and program your channel and then program the groups. You can have up to three groups and I think around 99 flashes per group. So once you select your desired power for the groups as well as the master flash, you can go ahead and get your other flashes and make sure that they're set up to receive the signal. In this case, I have a AD200 that we're gonna trigger using the V860 Mark II. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and configure the power for the master. Now I can scroll through and have the master be controlled by TTL or manual, and I can even turn it off entirely if I don't even want this speed light to fire, I just wanna use it to trigger all the other flashes. So I'm on channel one, and I have group A programmed. Manual power, 1 16th power. So I'm gonna turn on my other flash and make sure I'm on channel one, group A, and then I'm gonna fire the 860. Now you'll see the flash fired and it even changed the power reading on the back of the 8200. 1 16th, just as I programmed on the master flash and I can go ahead and test fire that over and over again. Now, it might be hard to see again, but as I programmed, the V860 is not firing, it's only the 8200. Now, if I want both of them to fire, I can go ahead and give the 860 a power setting, and there you have it. Now, both of them are firing at the same time. And that's how you have the 860 act as a master or commander unit for other Godox flashes. If you had many other Godox flashes you were firing at the same time, you would just need to make sure that they're on the correct channel and group. Now for the next use case, let's say we have the V860 Mark II and we want it to be triggered by another V860 or any other Godox flash or even a Godox trigger. Let's hit that wireless selection button and here we are in radio mode where we just were in the previous use case. You can see that this is the master mode. We got a green screen. If we hit the wireless selection button one more time, now we are in radio slave mode. 
Now we can hit that mode button to cycle through stroboscopic, TTL, or manual mode. Let's stay in manual mode and go ahead and calibrate our trigger device. In the previous video, we used the 860 to trigger other flashes. In this one, we'll use a Godox controller to trigger the 860. If you don't have a trigger, don't worry. For the most part, all the modern Godox menus are, are, are relatively the same. And you can see the similarity in the menus. You see we have all of our different groups. We can select a group and cycle through the power with our dial. You'll notice that as I uh, rotate the dial, the power changes and it'll even carry over and you can see it reflected in the LCD screen of the 860. Let me go ahead and highlight this channel so we can see exactly what's going on. If the channel and the groups are set up, every time I hit that fire button on the controller, the 860 will fire. Again, it'd be the same thing if I was using another 860 to control it. I can even bring back in that uh, AD200. You can still see that we're in channel one, group A. And I can trigger both of them at the same time since they're both in the same group. I definitely hope that was helpful for you. If you have any other questions about the V860 Mark II, leave them in the comment section down below. If you haven't gathered it by now, I absolutely love the Godox line of flashes. They're a great budget brand of flashes with tons and tons of features normally boasted by much more expensive units. I have several of them that I gig with and I definitely have aspirations to purchase some of the newer ones as well. If this video helped you, definitely let me know by clicking that thumbs up button down below and you know, if it didn't, then you know, do the other, do the other one, I don't, whatever, do the other one. And definitely if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be releasing all sorts of great how-to videos in the future. Finally, thanks for watching. Until next time, cheers.